vaccines require a temperature controlled environment until they are administered. To ensure their effectiveness, they must be handled, stored, and transported with care. In this short video, you'll learn how to transport vaccines during an emergency. You'll also learn about the materials you need to keep your vaccines safe and effective when moving them quickly. To get started, emergency transport refers to the need to relocate refrigerated or frozen vaccines to protect them when a facility's ability to store them is compromised. This could happen because of a problem with equipment, a power outage, or a natural disaster. No one can predict when an emergency will happen, but you can take steps to prepare and protect your vaccine supply if one does occur. First, make sure you have an up-to-date emergency plan and a vaccine coordinator. Your plan should include an alternate vaccine storage facility. You should also check that you have the materials you need to move your largest annual inventory of vaccines at any moment. Everyone on your staff should know where to find your emergency vaccine transport plan and related transport materials. In addition, make a note of these four steps to ensure successful vaccine transport during an emergency. Step one, determine your transport system and gather your supplies. Confirm with your alternate storage facility that they are ready to temporarily store your vaccine supply. A portable refrigerator or freezer is the preferred system for transporting vaccines in an emergency. The next best option is using a qualified container and pack out materials. Step two, pack for emergency transport. Refrigerated and frozen vaccines should be transported in separate containers. Follow your facility's emergency transport plan when packing refrigerated or frozen vaccines. You can also refer to the CDC Storage and Handling Toolkit for detailed packing instructions. If you are using a qualified container and packout system, it may instruct you to use specific packing materials. These may include coolant materials such as phase change materials, conditioned water bottles for refrigerated vaccines, frozen ice packs for frozen vaccines, or insulating materials like bubble wrap or corrugated cardboard. You also will need a temperature monitoring device such as a digital data logger or DDL. Step three, monitor vaccine temperatures. Use a DDL to monitor any changes in temperatures. Check the minimum and maximum temperatures of the portable unit or container just before you leave and again when you arrive at your destination. If you must open the portable unit or container before arrival, check the temperatures then. Always document temperature readings and how much time vaccines spend in transport on a temperature log. Step four, arrive and unpack the vaccines at your destination. Before unpacking your vaccines at the destination, make sure to record the time, temperature, and your initials in the temperature log. Upon arrival at the alternate facility, Check the temperature of the alternate storage unit to ensure it is within proper temperature range for the vaccine. If it is, then quickly transfer the vaccines to the storage unit. Take immediate action if you note any temperatures outside the recommended range. This is called a temperature excursion. Label any impacted vaccines, do not use, awaiting guidance, and store them appropriately until a decision can be made about whether they are safe. Follow the steps outlined in your Standard Operating Procedures, SOPs, for temperature excursions, which may include contacting the manufacturer for guidance. For help with your vaccine-related questions, including those on storage, preparation, transport, and administration, contact CDC at nipinfo at cdc.gov. Please visit CDC's website for more training and resources to support your vaccination efforts, including the Vaccine Storage and Handling Toolkit, Pink Book, and You Call the Shots web-based trainings.